नहीं नहीं लीव मत कर अरे 52 था या इंटर आया चालू रखे दो हेलो हेलो Am I audible?
अब क्या होगा All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Divya Advankar, and I welcome you to the first webinar of the webinar series "Travel in the New Normal," organized by the School of Excellence. Our topic for today's webinar is the new outlook of travel industry post-COVID by Mr. Ajay Bali, Managing Director, BCD Travel India Private Limited. As managing director, Mr. Ajay Bali is responsible for the overall quality performance of BCD Travel across India. Prior to joining to BCD Travel, Mr. Bali spent nearly 18 years at Thomas Cook, based in Mumbai, in various leadership positions. Mr. Ajay Bali has had extensive experience in multinational contracting, security issues, configurations, and consolidations. and has been a regular speaker at high level industry events around the country with 29 years of experience mr bali is an acknowledged authority in the business travel industry in india his responsibilities at bcd travel include overseeing the company's operations including nearly 700 staff in over 7 cities in india and all activities relating to operations brand management network development supplier and industrial relations and sales and accounts management i welcome mr ajay bali to start with today's topic new outlook of travel industry post covid whilst the webinar is on we would be switching off the microphones and videos of all the participants in case you have any questions you can send them to us in the chat box along with your name uh the questions will be answered in the q and a session towards the end well um okay um mr bali given your rich background in the travel industry having dealt with crises in the past like 911 global financial crisis demonetization particularly in india etc how is this pandemic different from the earlier global crisis over to you mr bali yeah thank you i hope i am audible uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity uh, i am honored to be here and i hope i can share my experience and that is worth uh, listening and uh, appreciating so uh, first of all uh, divya this pandemic if anybody says that they have any experience about this handling this it will be a total uh, false statement we have never seen such a thing uh, the 911s the sars the demonetization they were all very uh, i would say mild <clears throat> this is something which was never ever thought or dreamt about it at least in my career and i am very sure that uh, even my senior colleagues in this industry would say the same because other crisis had a shelf life we knew what to do but here is one crisis which is actually making us think every day what is and how we are going to start imagine uh, an overnight every country just locked everything out every single human being was almost quarantined uh forget about travel i think we were not even able to leave our house uh, you know uh in 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 uh, easily so of course only for essential services and travel is one business which really actually needs people to move from position a to position b or one country to another country and that was completely stopped and and like it is completely what you say just simply dead so 
to answer your question, I am not even uh, even even thinking that I can answer this question. Only thing is that we are all uh, initially it was shock and awe. Then we started uh, analyzing it, understanding it, and hoping that at some point of time when it goes away, we will prepare ourselves to come back to normal. But uh, this is something which is unprecedented and uh, unthought of, unheard of. You want to, I mean, I can go on talking, but I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, sir, you can uh, go ahead with the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, okay. And I was about to say that, you know, what I did was, uh, and, you know, for the benefit of the viewers. Uh, so this is this is a topic which we've been discussing every day. Uh, we've been discussing uh, at least for the last 90 days with customers internally, uh, with the industry colleagues, and I'm sure there are a lot of webinars also happening around. So I just thought I will just prepare a short presentation. What I did was um, try to bring in some of the thoughts. What as a BCD, uh, what was our initial reaction? What is the current state of affairs? And what we believe would be the the, the future, uh, you know, post COVID era. So uh, if if that is fine with you guys, and I'm sure if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer that uh, at the end of the presentation. But I just thought this might be easier for me to walk you guys through uh, with some of the things which we have done. So if you can display the presentation, that would be uh, that would be nice, uh, Divya. Uh, so the presentation is already shared on the screen. Okay. So basically, the uh, if you see the first slide, slide number two, Divya, if you go, uh, you know, the, unfortunately, I can't see the presentation, but so I, I'm hoping that uh, it, everybody can see the presentation. So basically, you know, uh, if you see the what as a BCD, so when, when we got hit, so what, what really we do, uh, every employee was sitting at home. Uh, there was no business. Uh, there was no travel whether it is rail, whether it is uh, air, uh, nobody going to the hotel. So the business, the transactions just plummeted from uh, up to like minus 99%. The only thing we were doing earlier uh, in the first few days was just processing refunds. So that's all was, was happening. So what we did was, okay, th this is a time, it's a pandemic as hit. We have come kind of a, a, a standstill. So what do we do as an organization? So we started looking internally and say that how do we, increase enhance our capability what is the need of the hour the need of the hour was okay we are looking at our product you know we have a lot of products uh, which which help the customer uh, uh, what we call agent source which is consultants are uh, able to make the bookings it's, it's a very state-of-the-art tool uh, which is a global tool for us and we said let's upgrade that so that when we come back uh, you know we can uh, we can we can be more prepared so we started fine tuning our agent source trip source again is again a, a mobile app which uh, which is uh, you know which gives a lot of uh, facilities and, and features to the customer so all these tools and i don't want to get into the tool because i'm not doing a bcd marketing but we started increasing our capability and trying to fine tune our uh, our uh, uh, you know products we started reviewing our processes whether it's agents whether finance reporting automation so whatever we, we did not do for the last 20 years. This was a good time for us to really revisit uh, the entire uh, processes and just see if, if there is any duplication. Can we, can we remove some of the cobwebs if there was any and, and or the blind alleys so that we can, we can kind of clarify that. The most critical part, and I'm sure this would be across the industry and across the businesses, is cost containment. S simply we wanted to reduce the cost containment. Uh, we were looking at, uh, sorry, uh, that, that's the next slide. Sorry, I, the third part we wanted to look at the payment part because that was also very critical. Uh, you know, AR is the biggest challenge with our customers. So we said, how do we start converting the AR into a credit card, uh, 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 you know, uh, processes? So that we, we started approaching the customer, saying that you know what, this is a good time for us to get into yeah, the, uh, the credit card. Sorry. Uh, okay. So basically, the first first slide is talking about increasing our enhanced capability. Uh, so that's what we so uh, there are there is some noise coming. Uh, is there? Uh, sure, sir. They will be muted. Okay. So the, the second part, 
we we started looking at as a consulting this is our you know uh, consulting of uh, 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 of a, for our businesses, uh, so we're looking at future opportunities. What would be the post-COVID era? Uh, we were started looking at cost minimization. That's what I just said, cost containment. How do we reduce our cost? Because the burn, the burn ratio, we had to reduce the burn, burnout or the burn ratio of our expenses. And everyone is looking at it, whether it is right sizing, whether it is bringing redundancy, whether it is uh, the cuts and all those things which we said. So we started working on that. We started looking at our cash flow because it is very important for us to survive. And finally, we were starting looking at the revenue focus. What are the new areas, new possibilities where BCD can start looking at the revenue? So as I said, the first was improving or upskilling ourselves. The second, we started looking at our businesses, reducing cost, uh, increasing uh, uh, revenues. So these are the two things which we started. Uh, can you go to the slide four? I'm just, I'm just, it's a blind shot because I don't know, I can't see the slide, but I, I hope the blind, it's, it's about the, it's about say the travel risk and the five best practices. So the pandemic, we, we analyzed it into the five kind of categories, the risk awareness and prevention. So what is the risk? What is the risk which has brought, uh, this pandemic has brought to our businesses and how are we going to prevent it? Uh, you know, we, we knew that uh, the most important thing for us was to, bring the travel awareness, travelers awareness and engagement. So we wanted to update the travelers, what are the new rules, the new procedures, the new regulations, which is going to happen uh, if they have to travel. So we started engaging with the, with the travelers. We started assisting them because a lot of people were stuck in various parts of the world and we had to bring them back. And of course we could not bring them on uh, the regular flights. So the Air India started a one day Bharat and we started supporting them on that or even on the domestic, we bringing them back to the, to the, uh, you know, to the base point. So this was the second, third thing which we did. We have a traveler tracking device. So this was again uh, important. It became very helpful for us, for us to understand where all the travelers are stuck. We could track the travelers through their PNR and we started doing that. And finally, uh, we started supporting the corporate travel on managing the risk management policy because today, uh, you know, post COVID, there is going to be so much differences because people want to know whether their, their, cover, their insurance is covered. They want to make sure that they are safe to travel. So all these things in the new uh, traveler risk management policy we had to bring in. So this was the, this was the three things which BCD, uh, we did as an organization to just make sure that we, are, we become strong, we, become, we are able to face this pandemic and when, it, when we come out of it, we are successful. So that was the, that was the BCD part. Uh, let me go to the next slide, and this probably is something which uh, will will give you. So that's an impact of COVID on travel and tourism industry. The the you know I mean there are there are so many impacts on that, but I just was wanting to uh, you know cover a little bit very limited. Uh, uh, the the pandemic had a significant industry on the tourism, uh, you know travel restrictions, slump in demand totally banned, I, I already shared that. Uh, it also impacted tourism across the countries, uh, you know, because the coronavirus just spread across all the countries. So it was a complete as I said, a stoppage. United Nations made a lot of projections. There's going to be $50 billion loss. I mean, travel tourism is by far the second, if not the third largest industry in the world. And there was a complete standstill. So the losses were into billions. I just read an article this morning that uh, the, the air industry alone will lose $84 billion this year. Uh, I mean, there is going to be uh, huge losses in employment. Uh, people are going to, uh, the job losses, revenue losses. So it, it, it's a nightmare, unprecedented. The GDP of this country, you know, has gone to almost negative. Uh, uh, other GDPs across the world is impacted. Uh, the businesses have just come to complete standstill. And almost 90% of the travel has been blocked. So this was, this is kind of the impact of the tourism uh, on, on, and this is, as I said, the impact of the COVID on, on the tourism. I mean, in one word, if I were to say, it's a complete doom and gloom for the travel. Uh, almost zero, reset to zero. And, uh, Literally, uh, nobody flying, 
nobody traveling, nobody hotels are uh, converted into quarantine hotels, I'm told. And uh, there is no business, there is shutdown, a mass uh, retrenchment. Uh, this is what, uh, what we have been seeing in the last 90 days. So that was the impact of uh, COVID on travel and tourism. On, on, on a positive note, on 25th of May, after 60 days of lockdown, domestic travel started in India. Now, we know today the new travel or the post-COVID travel is so different than what people traveled in the past. Uh, there were strict measures at the airport. There was uh, frequent cleaning and disinfection, temperature checks, mandatory wearing mask, uh, new boarding procedures, a digital, uh, literally touchless, uh, empty seats, most likely the middle seats to be empty. So these were the new norms which has been suggested or which has been put into practice by the government post-COVID travel on the domestic. Cleanliness, sanitization, social distancing, I'm sure everybody's reading this in the, in the newspaper. So this became the norm even for travel. And uh, we just saw that, I think I've seen photographs, I'm sure you guys must have seen photographs, people traveling in the air, they are more looking like a patients, like they have got a mask, they have got uh, the, the, the shield which covers their face. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, uh, they, there is a suggestion that the person who sits in the center seats need to wear a PP uh, suit. So you can imagine, I mean, I don't even know people will be actually scared uh, to get into the plane because you said, my God, before I get into the plane, I'm completely sanitized. I, I, I see the aerostasis who are going to uh, be wearing masks. Uh, there is going to be no meals given. Uh, totally different. It's, that's a new norm, which is what... Uh, we see today boarding pass. I mean, I, if you want to check in before that, you have to really uh, provide your uh, data. Uh, uh, you have RMG of Setu, you have, it's an important. So all those things became uh, the, the new norm uh, for, for uh, the travel. Now, I don't know whether how many people had, had heard or thought about it, but that's the fact. Now, as I said, in the news, the next screen, I, I show you, uh, you know, you can see from the, the new rules for contactless travel. I mean, it, it's a very busy slide, but basically it, it just tells what, what the safety is, the priority, social distancing, the new norm, less baggage is encouraged, no in-flight service except water, Arugya safety, as I said, is mandatory. Uh, you have to report three hours before, uh, and, and, and I'm sure televisions have uh, shown you how people are standing in the queue or how they are boarding in. Uh, there are at the gates, at the security, so this is this is what is unfortunately uh, that the new norm or the new travel uh, is how you and again I'm still talking of domestic I'm not even touched international this is what you you must be seeing in the in the newspaper or sorry in the television is all about domestic travel because we have not even opened international travel so now you know, again, the next slide gives you again what airlines have to say. What are the, and again, mind you, what I'm showing you today, it will change maybe tomorrow because it's so dynamic. The new rules, new regulations are coming every day. And so domestic airlines, each airline has got their own way, like Indigo has a 48 hours, uh, web check-in prior, baggage tag, there are rules. The check-in baggage, only one bag. The cabin baggage is only seven kgs, you know, in-flight meal not provided. So each airline has shared what they will provide, what they will not provide, what is important, what is critical, and what this is how the new rules have come. And mind you, the travel cost is not cheap. So you're going to pay more and you're going to go through all these hassles if you have to travel. So I don't know how much confidence is, will be there for the people to travel initially. To add to the challenge of the travel, each state has come out with their own lockdown in India. Now, I know they say, you know, Sone I mean, I, basically, guys, we are already having no business. There is no travel. And now when the travel opens a little bit, it has got its own processes. It has got its own way of um, handling it, you know, right from the 
you make a booking uh, to go to the airport, sit in the aircraft and get down there. And then you have various states coming with their quarantine protocols. What it says, basically, people don't want you to travel. The states are not welcoming you. The states don't want to see people coming from different other states because they are worried that the COVID cases will increase. So every state created their own quarantine, uh, whether it is Bihar, whether it is Punjab, Haryana, Jharkhand, and I don't want to go into the, the, all this uh, uh, various states, but mind you, my only suggestion uh, to everyone listening is that if you are traveling, make sure you know which state you're going, what is the quarantine, what are the rules and regulations, which from the state which you are entering, uh, uh, you're going to travel the rules of that state and the rule of the state where you're going to arrive. That's also important. And you need to understand because if you have to come back to your base state, so what are the rules? So you have to be very, very educative today. And as a consultant, as a travel consultant, our life is actually becoming more and more challenging because we need to be aware of all these rules and regulations. We need to understand how a traveler is going to, when he wants to undertake travel, what are the information which we need to give to him? When he's doing a check-in and a web check-in, whether Arugya Setu is there, whether he's got a COVID positive or COVID negative certificates, these are all the things which are, which, 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 which is becoming the, the requirement for travel today. What we also see, so the next slide, Divya, uh, uh, is the on the on the resuming travel. Divya, is the slide on the resuming travel now? Yes, sir. Okay. So the, uh, if we just wanted to give you a little more information about uh, what's happening on uh, when the when the travel supply resumed, there were fewer airlines, there are smaller airlines, they reduced schedules and networks. And there is a progressive rise for the demand of private jets. This is a new travel. People who can afford, they're looking at private jets. Why? Because they don't want to get caught into the, uh, the scare of COVID. Uh, people who can, uh, you know, who need to travel, they are head on shows going for the private jets. Today, Indigo, SpiceJet, even uh, charter airlines, are they are very much in demand. And that's really increasing. So they are ready to spend big bucks, but they want safety. They want to be very sure that when they travel, they don't get the COVID impact. But even on the regular airlines, what we have seen, every time an aircraft needs to be sanitized, uh, every seat. So if the cleanliness is so critical, so important, and that's so expensive. So most of the airlines have got a scheduled reduced uh, aircrafts. Of course, government also not allowed them to get the full capacity, but whatever they have, they put it into flying. They have to really take a lot of uh, you know, care about the cleanliness of the aircraft. Sorry, there is more like a monologue. So sometimes, you know, I'm not very sure whether I am I am uh, I'm getting the uh, you know uh, the contact with the audience. But having said that, uh, this is going to be the last three slides. So so far, if, if you see, I just want to recap that when the pandemic hit, as an as as an industry, as an organization, you know, it was it was a huge setback. Honestly, we did not know what hit us. It took some time for us to understand the the huge the, the size the size of the, the entire hit on on the on the industry and our business quickly we got into uh, a correction mode and just started looking at our internal and external processes and i'm sure every industry would have done that the second part i i kind of covered the impact of the covid on 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 the businesses so billions of dollars of losses mass uh, unemployment uh, hotels going out of business, bankruptcy. Now, I don't know whether you are aware there is the Thai Airways has gone into, uh, you know, bankruptcy chapter 11. Uh, Virgin Australia has gone into bankruptcy. Air Mauritius has gone into bankruptcy. 
uh, there are a couple of more small costs. Uh, Cathay Pacific got uh, a five billion dollar uh, support from from uh, their government. Singapore Airlines has got over ten billion dollars in support. Lufthansa, Air France, British Airways, they're all looking at uh, support from the government. Uh, even the American carriers are getting big support from the government. So this is the impact and this is where we stand. Once the travel resumed, we started seeing the new norm of travel. And the new norm is all about social distancing, all about safety, sanitization, touchless digitalization, everything wherever possible uh, should be digitalized so that there is no contact coming. And even in the aircraft, mask, are important. So just to, you know, I just wanted to recap what I, I, I covered so far to give you a little impact of a little uh, flavor of what has happened so far. Now that, now that we've seen the domestic opening up, now that we see more and more world, I mean, countries opening up their borders, uh, you know, there is a lot of talk going on right now, uh, whether it is uh, Middle East, whether it is Europe, whether it is Asia, a lot of countries are looking at wanting to open because they just, they realize that they cannot keep the borders locked for a long time because the economy gets impacted, the revenue, the tourism got impacted and every country was getting poorer by the day. What we, and so the next three slides I will cover basically of the industry outlook and what is currently happening and what would happen in the next uh, few weeks according to us. So as I, I just touched upon, uh, you know, we get the next slide is COVID-19 era. Uh, so the, the, the first bullet point we said was the airline liquidity crisis and I just shared with you and the safe distancing policy. This, is what the, this has come as a new norm. Enhanced border control measures, tracking and tracing. So this is when the international travel starts. Now you will see this as a very critical thing. Border control measures, tracking. So every time a person is going to travel or enter into a border, there is going to be a tracking. A digital a barcode, so you will have to really fill a lot of forms. You'll have to give a lot of checks, uh, tests if required, to make sure that you are COVID free and you, you are allowed to enter uh, into the border. Immigration, the, the whole issue is not only about you having a valid visa, but also you are healthy to enter the country. There will be digital certificates, which are started being, which are currently being uh, issued now, that you are safe to travel. Uh, there is going to be a QR code, which will, uh, they, will uh, they will check on the QR code. They will, they will know exactly in the last few days or where are you have gone, who you have contacted it. So these are all the informations which they will start collating. And this is, as I, as I say, this is being happening in Singapore right now because they are one of the most advanced countries on this. So they have started uh, getting into all this uh, checks and balances. Regional travel bubbles, and I will talk about this in my uh, two slides later, but this is what is the, is the activity which is started taking place uh, between some countries. Expanded duty of care. Today, this is so important that a traveler or the organization is really looking at this focus area of duty of care. What do we mean by duty of care? We mean the safety of the traveler, the well-being of the traveler, his whereabouts of the traveler. We want to track him when he, where he's traveling. The company wants to know. The government wants to know. So these are all the new uh, norms uh, or the new focus areas, which is going to, it was there earlier, but it was, now it is going to be repurposed or refocused more so to ensure that uh, there is a duty of care when a, when a traveler is traveling, whether he's got the certificates, whether he's got, he knows uh, 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 where he's going, what are the rules of that uh, state. All this information is very, very, very important. Online, I mean, a lot of people do an OTA booking, uh, online booking. You may do a lot of online booking, but at the end of the day, you will, 
you, you will require a lot of offline information. The country where you are going, the country through which you are transiting. Now imagine you are traveling via a country uh, and I'll just give an example. You're going to Sydney via Singapore. And uh, you, when you go from Mumbai, you need to know the laws of India before you enter the aircraft. You will also need to know what happens if you're transiting in Singapore. What are the laws of Singapore when you're transiting? You may not get a lounge. You will be put in one uh, separate uh, you know, kind of a hall where only transit passengers are kept. You will not be allowed to interact much. So there won't be any restaurants or shops at the airport for all you know. They may be closed or they may not be available. Uh, then the next is that when you go to Sydney, so you need to also know the rules of the Sydney. So it's no, not only where is your end destination, but if you are transiting, that's equally important. Now imagine you are transiting a destination and the rules of the country change. There are quarantines have come into effect. There are more certificates come into effect. It's going to impact your travel. So if I'm, if I'm scaring you guys, that's really not the purpose, but I'm just telling you <laughs> what is going to happen <laughs> when the international travel starts. It's getting more and more complex. There is a lot of information required. And imagine the traveler. He needs to have, because he is literally embarking on a, uh, you know, on a journey. Uh, it's like in good old days, few hundred years back when people got into the ship, they never knew where is the destination. So, you know, I mean, the, the Columbus time when people used to just get on the ship and it was, it was so uh, unknown where they are going. I mean, of course, it's not that bad, but you'll have to have all this information, uh, especially when you are, you are traveling international and you're transiting borders. Uh, you know, so that's, that's what... Uh, we see as the uh, the new industry, uh, the new way of travel. Now, if I go to the next slide, so we have created three buckets. One is was about the market. Second is about the traveler, and third is about the customer. When the customer, I mean, is the corporate traveler, uh, the corporate uh, the organization. Now, the market, what we what we believe and what we are seeing today. They say capacity lacks the demand. Now, this is initial because there is a pent up demand. Now, assuming when, when the borders open up, uh, not very many airlines will get into flying straight away because they have to really clear the norms of uh, COVID uh, safeness. They may have reduced capacity, but the demand is going to be high because there are a lot of people stuck across the world. And I'm sure uh, Mr. The, uh, uh, Air India is working on bringing back a lot of Indians. But again, there are a lot of foreigners stuck and not necessarily only India, but I'm talking about the world. So there is going to be uh, you know, more demand initially uh, within the capacity. What does what that will mean? It's a cost. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but a one-way ticket from US to India today is in excess of one lakh rupees on an economy. So that's the one-day Bharat cost. Now, this is why, because they are taking an empty flight, to, to the destination and bringing back the passengers. So that's why they're charging you more than one lakh rupees US or more than 50,000 to UK, more than 20,000 to Dubai and so on and so forth. So that's, that's where the cost of travel is so high right now. What people fear is not only this pandemic, but this is wave one. What if there is a wave two? Now we believe, uh, China may have a second wave or South Korea may is looking at a second wave. Singapore was on a lockdown and they opened up and they got a little more a second wave and they, they again kind of became very strict. So people fear that what if the future panda few, the second wave starts. Imagine you are transiting a country which is supposedly COVID free or which is aligned and suddenly the pandemic, the second wave starts and there's a quarantine happens and you get again locked. So that's the fear for the, what we expect that you may travel, but what is the guarantee that if you were there for a week and if the rules of the country change and there is a quarantine, then you're going to get stuck. Like some people got stuck when the wave one started. Now, if 
for, for the benefit of, of the listeners, when in the March, when the lockdown happened, a lot, lot of people of Indian origin got stuck across the world. Because overnight, everything was just locked. Everything was quarantined. So that's, that's the fear what we see that the market has got the fear about this thing. And of course, uh, on cleanliness is, I mean, how much you can clean, how much you can sanitize is anybody's guess. It's the focus is totally on that. Now let's come to the traveler. How does he feel? Then uh, imagine. Sir, uh, I, sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, we're getting requests from participants to be a little louder or if you could just hold the mic a little closer to your mouth. Thank you. Okay, I don't know. I hope so. I can. Am I, am I more audible? Yes, Is it better? It's better. Okay. So let, let's, let's, let's look at the traveler. You know, I, I've just shared with you the market condition. I've shared with you the, uh, you know, the challenges. If I were to a traveler, if you are a traveler, you will think so many times where is, you require it, need that trust. The travelers want to be more trusting the travel, trusting the airline, trusting the, the country where they are going. So these are the new fears which has come to the mind of the traveler. Repatriation fear is a new real fear because you know what? You travel suddenly and then they say, oh, you know what? Your certificates are not good enough. You have to go back. That could be another fear. Travelers will bring additional supplies. Now, because they are traveling, it's going to be like a, uh, you know, a big journey and they will be covering masks and sanitizers and whatnot they will be carrying. So their baggage is going to be more because there's a lot of fear. They, they don't know what to carry, what not to carry. And a lot of people would say, you carry this immunity better, eat this medicine, eat that medicine. So that's because there is no vaccine right now. So anybody's guess. So I'm sure if a person stays in a joint family, he may have a lot of advices what he should be carrying when he's traveling. Uh, you know, so I mean, again, that, that's going to really uh, challenge his baggage. But again, you know, the baggage is again a problem in domestic. You can't, you have to have a very small baggage and only check-in baggage is one baggage a lot. So you can imagine on one side, you have got a fear and the other side, the, the, the airlines are insisting that you can't carry weight. I have I've touched on this point, but you know, the transit is testing or pre-government approvals, re-entry quarantine, immunity passports, now, these are all the new norms which a traveler will have to carry. He'll have to think, he'll have to make sure that he has got all the ammunition with him uh, to travel from one country to the other country. And the corporate traveler, oh, sorry, the corporate, the organization, they are equally worried because, you know, one thing is there, they want to make sure that, is there enough insurance for the traveler? Because what if he gets stuck in a country is he covered under that? So these are the new things which we have started thinking. Even the traveler has now started thinking. He said, oh my God, I wish my travel insurance is not $100, it's say $10,000. Because there's a fear. If he has to travel, he has to maybe overly insured. Now, when you are overly insured, there's a cost. So as an organization, they require not only the safety, but they also require the ROI for travel. So do you say, you know why? Why should we be actually making people travel? Let's go on Zoom. Let's go on virtual, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, meetings and all those things. Because today, it's not about the money. It's about the fear of getting stuck. It is once you're stuck, that the fear of the cost, which is just going to go increasing because then you are dependent uh, on, on the local mercies and in the country where you are. So a corporate customer is actually also getting more worried Will they allow people to travel? Or whenever they travel, there is going to be a lot of approvals required because they don't want the travelers to get, uh, you know, for well, it should not happen. But suppose if, if they get stuck and if they, are, if, they, if they get infected with COVID, who is responsible for it? Now, as an organization, they have to take care of the employees. So these are all the fears which is right now coming in the mind of a organization as well as the traveler because there is a lot of fear of unknown when people are going to travel. 
And, and finally, let's, let me talk about, so I hope I've got, I've not scared you guys, but if I've scared you, but there is some positive things, which is what is happening today is, as I said, the travel bubbles are happening. So people are, the countries are opening their borders. They are opening selectively. They are looking at possibility of uh, having more, uh, you know, internal travel between two or three states like Australia and New Zealand with the Tasman. They are talking about travel bubble so that they can easily allow the citizens of these two countries to travel between the countries. So that's, that's, that's a positive sign. Singapore, China is talking of a green channel, which will allow uh, between both the countries, you know, uh, direct. Of course, it has got a lot of restrictions. It has to be approved travel. Uh, the traveler needs to have a certification, uh, COVID, they, there may be blood tests on both the sites before they travel. They want to make sure that he's COVID negative. Uh, he's got the uh, in, uh, invitation from the company, uh, either in China or in Singapore wherever he's going. So all those checks and balances there, but they are now looking at opening. India has already opened domestic. I do believe by mid-July, we may have international openings. Again, I don't know if that, that, that date stays or if it further gets pushed. Singapore Airlines still care. They have started opening the flights. Uh, the new schedules have come. Uh, American Airlines, United Airlines, they have all looked at the new schedules. Lufthansa has started. Uh, new schedules, Emirates has come with a new schedule, Etihad has come with a new schedule. So there are countries now opening up. So that's the positive news which is happening. India, which is again in lockdown till 30th from, from the international borders, if it opens, then we will find, we will hope that more aircraft from the other countries will come. Hotels, Marriott has opened all its hotels in China. China is actually booming back to business, if you uh, see, because all the domestic is back to like almost 90%. Hotels are open, restaurants are open. I believe South Korea is also uh, slightly better. Japan has seen an uptick. Uh, so there are countries who are now seeing an increase in travel. Uh, yeah, this, this is kind of thing. Of course, on the negative side, Hertz has filed for bankruptcy. I, I just shared that a couple of other airlines have also got bankruptcy. So. This is kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of what I say, a small summary from my side. I only hope I've done justice uh, uh, and I've been able to share and explain to you uh, what, has, what COVID has done to the travel and trade business, how badly we are impacted, how many of us probably don't know whether we have jobs tomorrow or not, how, how many of our colleagues have lost their jobs in this industry, how many people have got pay cuts, uh, you know, so it's like that, that story can go on and on and on. So it's been pretty sad for the industry. So with this, I complete my, uh, my presentation or whatever thoughts I had, and I'm open uh, to any questions. Divya, if you have any more questions, I'm more than happy to answer that. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, thank you so much for sharing such uh, fascinating insights. Uh, we definitely have questions. We would begin with the first question. Sure. Uh, well, we have a question from Amrita here. Uh, Amrita is asking, do you think travel to Australia or New Zealand shall increase considering these are the less affected regions and have always stressed on hygiene and uh, sanitation? Well, travel to these countries may increase provided they will allow other travelers to come into the country. But you are right, uh, people would be wanting to travel to places which is less COVID infected. Uh, I, I do believe, uh, and I was in Fiji in February, uh, Fiji is completely 100% COVID free. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will be wanting to go to Fiji. I'm, I'm told Maldives is again uh, less COVID free. So yeah, you're right, people would travel to to destinations which has got less COVID cases. But again, I always say that it's also on the reciprocating country uh, if they will allow people from COVID infected countries to get into the country. Very true. Um, all right. 
I think that answers the question. Uh, we have another question here. Um, the question is, how do you see future of travel industry? According to you, how long it will take for travel industry to get back to normal? Okay, let me first say what is back to normal. So again, you know, uh, to me, uh, there are different buckets uh, in which uh, travel industry is today segmented. So uh, we have got corporate travel, uh, we've got leisure, we've got visiting friends, relatives, we've got government travel, and uh, we've got uh, people travel for the work, uh, what we call it, the, the Gulf. The, so different segments will start in a different way. To me, the first thing would be the visiting friends and uh, people who are stuck, the students who are stuck, they, that travel will, will, you will see once the, once, once the country opens up, people will travel and people will make sure at their base, uh, you know, people who are like, uh, you know, uh, people who are parents are stuck somewhere else and kids are in a different country. So they will actually try to first see each other. So these are the first things. Leisure, again, as I said, it all depends on, on people. If they are more confident to travel, uh, then they will. But domestic tourism will definitely uh, spin off and quicker uh, than international because in India, uh, I'm sure. Uh, this quarantines will, will kind of get over in short time and tourism on, on, on this domestic tourism, religious tourism will, 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 will have a immediately, I'm sure everyone will want to the Lord to go to the temples and, and worship. Thank you very much, God, for saving me. I'm hale and hearty. I need your blessing. So people will go for travel. Business travel. Uh, we all expect the business travel to be uh, and three to four months before we see uh, confidence building up in the business traveler because people are happy uh, doing business meetings, virtual meetings. So yeah, that's going to be a little slow. So that's kind of the buckets. But in the next six months, you will see travel coming gradually up. Next 12 months, hopefully we will come back to 18 level. And the next 24 months, will come back to 19 level. This is the prediction by various pundits, not alone by me, but I'm just reading for it. What is the future of travel? Let me tell you guys. And I, I don't know, it's a bad example, but I just gave an example to me. People were not allowed to drink for the next two, in the last two months. And when the liquor shops opened, what happened? You saw the long queues. Similarly is tourism and travel. Let me tell you, we are all been quarantined. We are all scared. But the day we get the confidence back that it's now safe to travel or we trust to travel, you will see people traveling and flocking. Because let me tell you, nobody wants to be in a human, cannot be put in a cage anymore. We cannot be put in one, one city. So we want to travel. That's an urge for travel. Yes, two things we need it. One, of course, you need, require money. And money right now is in short supply because people don't make a lot of money. But when the money comes back, in the pocket, they will all travel. And of course, the safety. But travel has got a brilliant future. Travel was there yesterday. Travel is there today. It will be there tomorrow. And it will, people will come back with a vengeance, I'm sure. I'm very sure every one of you listening, if you get a chance to travel in the next three months, you will all be put sitting on the plane because you just want to go and see the world rather than sitting at home and being quarantined. So that was a long answer, but I hope that answer uh, meets the expectations. Definitely, sir. Okay, uh, you also mentioned uh, something AR. So uh, what is that exactly? I mean, average revenue or argumented reality being, uh, you know, <laughs> the full forms? It's, it's a simple, it's an account receivable for us. Because when we sell a ticket on credit, we have to recover the money. So for AR is the Bible. It's not uh, any other acronym, but an account receivable. And you know, as an organization, as as a travel, because sometimes we we are called the bankers to the corporate, where we give extended credit to the corporate. Now, if you know, everybody knows DSP or low cost carrier. There is no DSP just gives you seven days, and low cost carrier you have to do an advance purchase. Uh, you know, you have to pay in advance. So, but we give credit to the travelers or to the to the organization. First thing first. We need to recover that money because if you don't have the money in our pocket, how can we issue fresh tickets? Uh, thank you, sir. We have one more question here. 
is there any age limit for international travel when it is expected to resume in next month nobody has told us there is the age barrier so i am very sure uh, there is nothing but but let me tell you there will be a lot of restrictions on the certification on the digital certification on the well being of the traveler on the health of the traveler so if you are old maybe they will look for more certificates from you if you are young that doesn't mean they will not look certificates for you because it's all about how healthy you are that will be the criteria uh, i have not come across anybody saying uh, that an old people cannot travel all right um, one more question sir uh, will this phase accelerate digital transformation at large travel very good question and i must and i must say that i missed this part to me uh, and again you know this whole pandemic has actually fast tracked the digital transformation of this business what was what was expected to happen maybe in 2030 you will probably be seeing it next in 2022 because everything is getting digital everything is getting you know people want safe distance they want no touch and now so as i said digital certificates uh, passports uh, visas uh, boarding pass uh, you know even check in counters will be everything will be digital we have to just flash some card or some machine will look so yeah it's is just going to be uh, it's not about uh, only in other you know like i, I think our prime minister was very keen to bring digitalization in the pay you and the in the payment section but in travel is going to be very quick and very fast so very good question thank you for reminding me this is the future is digitalization of travel and uh, so how a covid 19 would affect on group travel that's is going to be uh let's let's look at group travel in 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 couple of things so the package tours will take some time i would say that uh, a family group tours would be much more faster and quicker uh, as as a rebound but i'm very sure that you know whenever you talk of package tours even as a traveler would be thinking twice that it's not only the plane but i will be in the package tour on a bus with others for uh, for you know 14 days 16 days so that's going to be little uh, apprehensive i mean the customers will be not very very confident but if it is a family group like you know we are all traveling in a family then i'm sure uh, that that's that's going to be more uh, accepted than the than the group tours okay um all right sir the last question uh what would be your message to the students who are looking out for travel as a career well honestly i think the first 30 minutes if i spoke every student would be getting depressed and uh, let me tell you guys in travel industry most of us are not in a very good position good shape uh the pandemic has really impacted us very severely let me tell you it's very severe uh unheard of unprecedented but i always say that there is always silver lining in anything anything which happens any change which takes place is always for good so to me travel is one thing which will never die travel is one thing yeah it may change you know it may change some of the protocols and the processes uh, it may change the way we travel today uh, you know but we will travel so there is a huge potential for travel in fact to me people who have not traveled in the past would say you know what actually i want to travel you know why because who knows if there is a second pandemic after 3 years because the way uh, we hear that oh this could be the beginning of the pandemics which is coming because so you know what anything happens so travel is not going to die travel is not going to reduce yes it may become as i said a, a different way uh, so you may be have to and you are you are young you are students you will learn this fast and i'm sure uh, you will become better travel consultants than what we were in our life so don't worry be 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 positive is 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 a short uh, uh, you know what do you call a setback 
but again you know just to add to this since i think uh, there are no more questions i just want to you know i always say that anything which 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 hurts us also makes us learn so what this pandemic has made us learn you know as an organizations the giant organizations we just get we have back at our processes we have looked back at our um, structures and we have realized that you know what we were pretty inefficient now we are we are trying to become more efficient why because we are becoming we have to make most cost effective so uh, in a way this pandemic has also made us think a lot think internally deep down look at the processes and come out more leaner and more effective so uh, don't get scared of it to the my message to the students all right sir so that was the last question for today and uh, thank you so much for this fantastic session it was a superb show i'm sure our participants have got enlightened over this topic today i really thank you for this session today uh, for sharing your time with us thank you to the participants for being a part of it thank you participants i hope i was i have not scared you guys but believe you me uh, future is much brighter than what we see today thank you all right thank, thank you so you. much Thank you.